Yeah. Uh, it gets difficult sometimes. That's true. Um, so, uh, this is always the hard part. Once I get through this segue intro part, <laughs> then I'll, I'll start flowing. But sometimes I got to like, uh, it's awkward for me to actually start. All right. So Joyce Ming, uh, appreciate you coming over to the channel. Um, I'm so excited. I love your channel. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Type Talks. I love your channel too, Sean. No, don't say that. I didn't say, say No, this is about you, Joyce. <laughs> uh, the people on my channel already know, Sean, we need to get new people uh, to take the tension off me. Um, so it's better that way. Um, but so uh, you, how, how long have you been on YouTube making content? Oh, one year, seriously. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah so like what you're doing, like to facilitate all these people getting together, uh, you're a certified MBTI practitioner. Um, what, what does that even mean? What does that even entail? How do you be, is that just because you're like addicted to MBTI and do you have like a problem choice? <laughs> yeah. MBTI is my heroin cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a certified MBTI practitioner, which means I can administer the official test for people. And it means I have to go through some training. I'm also certified with Personality Hacker and I'm one of their profiler trainers as well. It's like a boot camp where they teach you about the function, like they have a brief part about the functions for the official MBTI and it's mostly about dichotomies and understanding them thoroughly. With okay. Personality Hackers training, they go more into the functions and less about the dichotomies. Yeah. A lot of what it's cool with like seeing you is because like a lot of people before I started making YouTube content, I was like a, a very big MBTI lurker for the last like 10 or so years. Uh, so uh, yeah, I've been addicted to this stuff as well, right when I stumbled upon it all. Um, but for me, it's like you, you run across people in your journey, across people like Susan Storm or Heidi Preeb, things like that. And it's like, when I run into your channel, it's like, you know, all these people. So it's like, for me, it's like, I have, I own, I, I, I know that person's name. <laughs> Where do I know them from? And I just, it's, it's interesting to me because you're like intermingled with all these like really people that I always just really got a lot of relating, uh, informative kind of stuff over the years. Um, and to me, it's just super cool that <laughs> you're like intermingled. So I'm like, Joyce needs to stay my buddy because I like to, I like to have access to all those people too. It's nice. That's why I like watching your videos because you get to see them and kind of get that, uh, you know, not so much on a blog or whatever. You get more of like an intimate look at that person so you can kind of see deeper from already like kind of researching them kind of thing. Yeah, I, I like to give people like a real life representation of types because it helps you really get to see the type's soul. And I feel like that helps you learn more than reading a two dimensional description. And I also love meeting all of you type folk like you, Sean. And it's just a pleasure. It, what it teaches me is like the value of community, <laughs> which, which I love initially. So it's, it's tying my love of people, connection and community with type, which is our, are my two favorite things together. So I'm basically addicted to, to what I'm doing right now. It, it, I don't know, like <laughs> to me, I, I really love personality theory. I, I feel like, uh, personality theory it, it when i think about it, it it's it's almost as fulfilling as is as, as like i don't know a, a purpose it is a purpose for me i feel like it's a higher calling to bring people together and so they can share with each other because there's so much division in every part of life right now you know politically there's division socially there's division i mean like there's isolation like no one's really talking to each other because of covid and we're all isolated and so maybe i was hoping that type talks could be that place where people could meet together and be themselves and feel genuinely connected to each other and so they could really feel bonded with each other that's my hope and, and yeah, like, so for me, I started those chat things, but it's like the same as what we're doing right now. I'll, I'll title it as chat or whatever with Joyce. Um, but like, that's kind of was my thing on a smaller scale. Um, <laughs> but it's the it's whole thing. It's like bringing, it's not just everyone kind of, you know, my consistent viewers kind of know who Sean is and I just repeat myself and whatever. So it's like, it's nice to bring in people to kind of show that, hey, look, there's another example. Here's another example. We're all... Because again, yes, like you, um, I'm I'm extreme. INFPs and INFJs are the like what the top types to be drawn to psychological or MBTI kind of stuff. Generally, I mean, not solely, but um, we do have a high favor with 
going down that rabbit hole or whatever. Um, but so for me, the same way, I, um, I obviously am targeting more of like an INFP kind of route. Obviously I didn't like fully open it to everybody. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, there's plenty more types that view my channel um, and they're more than welcome. Um, but for me, it's like, for me being outside in society and around the kind of work environment I'm in, I'm around a lot of other types the majority of the time, which can get draining um, if, if you can't really be yourself all the time. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, so it doesn't mean any other, the types are bad types, but like for me, when I really have to uh, explain myself like all the time of what I mean, where I'm coming from, um, that's where the INFP targeted channel came in. Um, you know, because again, I, you learn through other people and things like that, other types. I don't just like focus on one type. It's like everyone we can learn from anybody. But um, for me, it's really, it really was a place to make one type kind of feel comfortable, relatable, you know, understood, kind of just have a place to kind of go. Like you said, it's you're creating the what you got going on is just you stick to that. And it's a very, I mean, you just hit 3,000 subscribers. So congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's just like, but that's what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's like, not everyone's going to like the content that you or I are making or putting out there. That doesn't, that's not the point. It's just doing what you truly believe that you want to do. And you feel like this is a higher calling as long as you just keep doing that. And like, that's what I'm saying for me. Sorry. I'm like constantly, I'm, I'm excited. I, I get excited. Um, but like, so for, with you, it's like, it's really impressive to me because like what you're doing with facilitating all these people, like, I, I don't know, that's a lot of people to get all into one room and like make it happen. And like, I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that behind the scenes that, you know, the viewers aren't going to necessarily see from a creator side of it. So like, I'm very appreciative when I see that. I'm like, man, Joyce is really like doing a lot of work. Behind it. So, so what's your, um, so what's your like plans for your channel? Is that kind of where you're going to stick to? I mean, cause some people swerve off and um, things like that, but is that kind of like what you're really passionate about right now that you want to really just keep facilitating and things like that? Yeah, so one of my favorite things is community building. So I'll definitely keep type talks and I'll keep building it until I just die and decease. But I'm planning <laughs> to add more facets to it. So okay. I'm planning to create a website called Dynamic Archetypes. It's to show how type is like a dynamic archetype. It's not like a st static one, but it, it has like a spectrum and you can be very fluid in that. But it type like typology is one of the many archetypes you can have on like as a person and they're there to provide a thematic exoskeleton for you but the individuality is the little things that make you up like the little experiences you went through that no one else has gone through all of the unique things that make up you are also a part of your archetype too so uh, it's it's a long story so <laughs> it, it, it's it's like you have two parts of your personality you have your individual personality and you have your collective archetype. So your individual personality are the unique traits that only you have. So it's the unique upbringing that you had, like Sean, you were in the military and that's very unique. And then you have the collective archetype. So these are general patterns that everyone falls into. And that would be the Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram. And these two facets make up who you are. I find that uh, people, their first, their first resistance to type is that they're afraid of being put into a box, but I've never mm -hmm. seen type as a box at all. I, I see it more as a way, like a truth to find further truths from. So you, you have this base truth that, you know, is type, and then you use that to find out the further truths of people and that it's not to put you in a box, but it's a starting place for depth. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's how I view it. I, I know, I mean, even like Frank James, he talks about that too commonly because like, like I, when I hear him talk about that, he's like, dude, it's not like a box. It's like a, but like, it, it's just, but for me, I've always viewed it that way. It's a tool that we have to utilize like every other system out there. Um, I like dabbling in all the systems, like, you know, objective personality. I like that system. I don't really know a ton about it, but just the fact, like, I think that's where you're talking about somewhat with your thing. It's like, where it's just, yeah, you have like an INFP or whatever, for example, but like there's so many facets to that. Because again, human beings can't be categorized by 16 like boxes. So it's like, for me, I love it. Um, but it, it's like, you know, the more scientific people like this, that stuff's all just hoo-ha and all this stuff. But for me, it's, it's, it is, I, I value it as not like the written book in like, the you know, I have to only do INFP type things. Um, so I understand it's a starting place, like home base, like 
preferences, things like that. But like if I'm stressed out or if I'm going to function differently, I'm going to utilize a different function that I have that everyone else uses at a high level. I'm going to grab it, put it up here in front of me, and I'm going to do it just to get out of whatever situation I got to get out of and perform at the best level I can for myself. So it doesn't, but that's the thing. I think people do can get tripped up when they do find MBTI, especially when they're like new to it or whatever, or Enneagram or whatever, but it's like they find it and they get excited because when I found it, I was like, how does this person know? Why, why are they writing stuff about me? That I, like, no one knows me. So it was a super comforting thing to know. Um, but like if you just grab the system and then say, well, I guess I can't speak in public or I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. Like you're just you're not developing yourself as a person. So it's I think it can get, be a problematic thing if used incorrectly. Um, but it's also nice to have systems like you're saying, where it's like you kind of, uh, open up more of the spectrum and just bring in all those other things. Cause there's so much more. It's just like, especially with like INFPs, um, they're very much different, um, within the scheme of an INFP, just because there's a lot of INFPs trying to like, I don't relate to it cause we're like extremely different to each other, but we still have that same preference box. Cause we're always searching and playing and doing all this stuff. You know what I mean? But. Um, I don't, I, you, you can jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. I noticed that there are certain trends within personality types. So there's a lot of variation, but there are like slight trends. For example, I noticed that INFPs tend to dabble between psychology, philosophy, and music, like, and go between those three sometimes for some INFPs. It's more common for them to do that. And even with the way that you customize the names down here and you added that blue slant there, uh, FI is, there's a higher trend where they'll change the appearance of things to match more of the their their FI theme going on. Oh, yeah. I had, yeah, yeah. that was one of the things I had to change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the, but the default one for StreamYard is like the solid color. And I was just like, well, what's the option? <laughs> and then I picked my blue. So yeah, that was a, yeah, I had to change that. Sorry. I got to put my hands on stuff. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I noticed that it, it, FI kind of needs to change things to match its FI identity. And you, you did that just then. So it proves that there's some reality to type, like a big reality to type. Yeah. And, and that's what I like to see, especially like, you know, before, again, before making YouTube content, you know, there are plenty of INFPs that have come and go. Um, obviously being a creator, you see a different side of things of how it really is over here. So I speculated with how it can be on social media, but I've always avoided social media. And it's like, you watch these creators and it's like the, the, again, like my channel is, I have the little slogan everywhere that I'm kind of starting to use like a place to relate. Um, cause that's kind of where it kind of developed too, because always when I started, it was really, that was kind of the intention because for me, when I watch people that are kind of like-minded on YouTube for the many, many years prior, um, I like the relating part of it. it so it's like I, I would still, you know, research and get the informative stuff from the INFJs and, you know, the really like informative and deep stuff. But yeah, I'll jump off. To, uh, I'll jump on the side and like watch the, you know, uh, so-called INFP. And you could just see little quirks or little mannerisms that they do. And it's really, it's not even like the bulk of the video per se. It's probably like, you know, maybe like a little segment, like I just grab that and I get a kind of log. Oh, that makes me feel better, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's just, it, to me, it's just, I really like to relate to people because um, when you are somewhat not the preferred society kind of type or whatever, I mean, um, it, it doesn't mean, you know, any type's better than any other type or we're less worthy because we're low percentage people. It's just, we prefer to navigate life differently. Um, so like for me, I just, I don't know, I, but that's why I like the type community and things like that. And like with your, your channel, it's like a fly on the wall. I could, <laughs> I could be a lurker and just sit there and watch all these people like people watch. And it's like, I don't know. That's why I like, like my favorite sitcom is like friends because like, it's like, I think it was just because of all the different types of people in there that I can kind of pick little pieces off of them and like really kind of have like, I don't know. It's, just, it's cool to me. Like just people, I, I like people, <laughs> even though I, it said we don't like people, but I love people. Yeah, a place to relate. That's so wholesome. Dr. Mike of NF Geeks, he said that NFs need each other. So it's great that you have your channel because you're giving a space for NFs to meet each other. And it's almost like you, you give a place for people to feel like their needs are met. And that's invaluable. Is Mike still around? Like, Because I, I used to watch him back in the day, but did he kind of stop making content or... 
Am yeah. I okay. <laughs> no, I. But he was one of the ones. Enough geeks and all that. I used to catch those uh, episodes, but like I, I, I thought he kind of disappeared. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's doing something somewhere else, but mm-hmm. uh, that was good stuff back then. Yeah, you've been in the community for a long time, Sean. I have too. Well, not actively. I haven't, <laughs> but uh, so. But that's what I'm saying. Like for the last like. Um, it's about been 12 years since I kind of found the MBTI stuff. And then I started really diving like in like psychology in any facet ever. Like it kind of came from type and like, it just started expanding from there. I just, I just ran with it for the last 12 years. Um, it's just, it's always been like a interest to me. Like it's just, I'm always just studying it. I'm always just like, like you said, it's like for you, it's like some addiction that like when I, I, I research tons of stuff. I mean, especially with the, videography stuff i've you know i like the video side of things so i'm trying to learn that as well but you know i mix it into my bag of tricks of like i want to learn i want to go learn more psychology stuff and like i don't know everything that's involved with it because to me it's like people are so fascinating um because it, it's so like for me i get bored really easy with like just pretty much everything um but like uh human beings that's why i'm so drawn to it uh, like that's my personal opinion why i am because it's so complex and that everyone is not the same. Like, it's like, you know that. So it's like, I don't, when I interact with one INFP, I don't like just take them as like, okay, I need to talk to them. Like, it's like, everyone's different. And I like to like, it's like a challenge to really kind of, I don't know, see if I can get on a deep level with that person and really connect. Uh, to me, that's just the thing I really enjoy doing. It, but it gives me, I don't know. I just, I just enjoy it. Cause I just, I know a lot of people are walking around with heavy, heavy walls up including INFPs, you know what I mean? But it's like, if you can kind of break those walls down and really get to the good stuff. Um, and I, you, I feel that if you verse yourself well with type and all that stuff, and the more systems you integrate or watch or, you know, participate in, the better of an opportunity you have to do that. Um, yeah. I'm planning to create my own system one day. So I noticed that a lot of psychometrics in that are professionally used, they're basically saying the same thing. So what I want to do is I want to integrate them with the Myers-Briggs. I just want to like make them all, put them all together because I feel like they're they're kind of fragmented, ne- needlessly so, because they're talking about the same thing. And so if you put them all in one place, it's it's less time consuming and it's <laughs> like it's it gets to the point more. <laughs> and, and that's what I hope to do. Like I like I I get kind of st- like sad when I see fragmented schools of thought, like, like this person believes in this and this one. <laughs> That's where we did for Joyce. <laughs> That's where we did. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I just want people to get along. Like I want them to, to stop fighting. So maybe if I figure out a way to put them together, they won't, fight anymore <laughs> but, uh, but that's what i'm saying that's where the roots of you know back in the day with all, all the ones that created it young and all that it's like when they created that that was kind of the intention to kind of like let's help this out but like since then we've we've kind of capitalized or like expanded it you know there's different things out there and it's like that's my thing it's like a lot of people are biased to a certain type like well i like mbti more i like enneagram more or i like astrology whatever it is it's like for me i just like to dabble like i I'm obviously a dabbler, so I keep all of them closed. It doesn't matter what it is. Harry's cognitive personality theory channel, all that kind of stuff. Like a lot of different things um, I like to just dabble in. So like, yeah, if an INFJ is typically going to want to focus in on a thing to where you grab it all and like, here it is. <laughs> um, so, but that's where I can appreciate that. And like, it's, it's interesting to me because a lot of INFJs seemingly are the ones that do create these systems, <laughs> but it, to me, it's like, I'm interested in it, but like for me to really just, I don't have enough patience to like sit with that for that long. And like, really, I don't know. I can, I can take things, very complex things and make them simplistic. I can do that. Um, but like with the personality system, I don't know. I don't know if that's really an INFP building type thing. I don't know what my point was, but, um, so like, yeah, so like, um, so you're gonna, hold on, Joyce, bear with me. <laughs> uh, do you have something to say? Hold on. I, I had a good point, but I don't know what it is. Yes. Um, so I, I do agree. I, I think that the TI in INFJs makes them want to like refine systems because they can see the inconsistencies and in what's going on. And they're like, okay, 
I'm just going to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a new theory with my TI framework. Yeah, and, and I'm just locking in and just zoning in. It's like, it's just, but for me, it's like, I just, I can't, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time focusing on things. I just, so I, I don't, for me, with anything, like, you know, it's like politics, whatever it is. It's like, I'm not political. I'm not, you know, but like, I see things on both sides, you know, good and bad. I see it everywhere. So it's like, for me, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just not driven to really refine a thing because I see perspectives from everyone's point of view. You know, it's like everyone's different. And it's like, okay, that's what that person agrees with. I don't might not agree with it. But like, it's like, to me, you can get something out of those little slivers of information, I guess. I saw on your channel, you like offer coaching services and like typing services and all that stuff too. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is to coach and type people. I'm kind of like people's armchair therapist and I talk to them about their life and help them resolve their feelings and emotions and help them get to the root of their trigger. I <laughs> like I'm the option that people go to when their traditional therapy doesn't work for them. And I find it the most fulfilling work I've ever done. And I want to do it for the rest of my life. Yeah. But that's what that's how I feel too, because like INFPs are also known as like the free the world's free psychologist with the healer aspect and I know I draw that kind of a crowd. It, not like I don't actively offer coaching services or typing services. I don't, I don't offer that stuff. But like in just in life, you find someone just kind of coming over there. They pull up a bed next to you and just, okay, help me out. It's like, what in the world just happened? So, but I, I like it. Um, for me, it's draining because um, I can't, because the level I want to go to help people, I have to use a lot of myself and I have to really like go put myself in their shoes kind of thing to really kind of help. So for me, I don't have the span to do like, you know, 10 people a day or something like that. But like, I do enjoy it. Like you said, I, I really enjoy helping people. And like, cause there's a lot of people that aren't so well versed mentally or inside, you know, it doesn't mean they're invaluable people cause they don't know themselves internally, but like, you know, like as in we might need help with producing things or, you know, making things in the real world or whatever. Um, people need help kind of understanding what in the world's going on inside. So that's where we can come into play. Um, and really just kind of everyone help each other out. You know what I mean? And that's the whole thing with like trying to solve the everyone fighting kind of thing. It's just like, no, it's, you know, the ESTJ is not the enemy. It's just like everyone kind of grab everyone and just utilize it. Like no one's better than nobody. It's like, you're good at this. You're Well, you're better good at this. It doesn't mean you're, I don't know, you're naturally more preferred good at it. Um, but it doesn't mean you're, you're, I don't know. We just all have different skill sets that naturally come good to us, but if we all link together and then we can all kind of help each other out. Um, but I just think we, as much as like an INFJ or an INFP is like a, I don't know, can be considered an outcast or a weird person or whatever was wrong with whatever stereotype stuff. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't add tremendous value if we actually are offered the opportunity to help kind of thing i agree yeah the nf temperament should be called like the free therapists because <laughs> they really are they go around helping people yeah all, and there's all really the there's no exchange for me it's just like it's i i enjoy doing it like i said it's like i i'm constantly trying to work on myself and i as much as it can be seen on a youtube video it's like oh it looks like you got life all figured out but it's like the hour prior to this, I'm sitting there walking around pacing with anxiety. I'm like, I get all this stuff I got to mentally overcome um, because I'm not a natural, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I don't know. But, but there's a lot of things in my life that, again, what we see on camera from people isn't always the full reality. And it's like when you or I get off our videos, you know, real life kicks in and we got to go navigate our mental process and like just. I have plenty of my low days. It doesn't, I mean, sometimes people see me and make a comment. It's like, man, you really look like you got life figured out, but it's like, I, I daily struggle. And it's, um, I don't know what the point was that one either, man. Sorry, Joyce. I'm not flowing good today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it's not about the point for NPs. It's about the journey for the NPs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's what it is. Like when I get in a rant, I, I just, I can go, but then like, right when I just, I don't know a lot of times and I can't end a video. Great. I can't like, it's like, I, I when I make a video, that's still this day. Like I can completely get excited about making a video and just completely flow in this net. And, and right when I realize I got to stop and end it, 
I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, I like pop out of it. I'm like, uh, I guess goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird to me. I don't, it's just awkward. I, I just, for me, I like things to just fluidly flow openly and, you know, having an end goal or all that stuff just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, it's just, it, again, it's just flowing. That's, that's how my whole life's been built. It's just kind of flowing. And luckily I haven't ended up like, I don't know, homeless or something, but it, it's all kind of worked out somewhat, but I don't know how. I think it's just the older I'm getting, you know, it's just trusting my intuition and kind of following that because I do feel there's, I, I do feel it's pretty strong. Like my gut, my instincts and things like that. Um, I just, I learned to trust it a lot of times nowadays, especially. Yeah. That's a good differentiator between the JP dichotomy where you're like flowing like the water, like you're, you're going along with the situations that come to you, whereas judges are more naturally have end goals or some sort of end point. Yeah. And yeah I, mean, I, I went into MBTI practitioner mode. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's fine. But that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the part that, you know, helps anytime you can interject with like the real, <laughs> the, all that kind of stuff. It's good for the viewers, you know, to kind of learn. So, um, but I mean, so what's your, what's, what's the thing about the draw for the, like, for me, like I, I'm fascinated, like I'm drawn heavily to INFJs. So like, it, it seems like it goes both ways. So like, we're very, very, very different. So what's your, like, what's your opinion and what's your take on like, why our types can be generally like really attracted to each other? Not like in a romantic way necessarily, but like, just like, you know what I mean? Like an attraction, like, where does that come from? Cause we're so different. Yeah, it's because together we can talk about the unknowable, the unseeable, the metaphysical. We can go to meta land together and we can talk about the things that matter to us. So we talk about, like for the INFPs, they bring up morality and the moral implications of things. And INFJs like talking about implications to concepts. And so there's this natural draw where we, we both like talking about abstract conversations um, together in, in a way that... It, for, for other people, it might be hard to keep track of. So we can just keep track with our abstract talk together. And we can talk about humanity together. And we talk about how people can care about each other and to, to nurture each other more. I feel like it's a very NF thing to, to think about what are more ways people can love each other more or respect each other more and that we can have a more ideal society. So it's almost like the is exchanging of ideals because these types are known as the idealists. So it's it's constantly giving each other our, our, our looks onto life and how life could be better. And what our, our, basically we can share our innermost cores with each other, the parts that are harder to share with other people. It, it's almost like, there's this natural interest into the human psyche and to the a person's innermost thoughts and, and feelings that these types have. And so they can share these things with each other and not feel ashamed and just go and like, it's like, we don't have to hold back. There's no holding back. There's just full on uh, talk about what we, it's always on our mind, you know? It's kind of like NF types when they're in day-to-day -day society, they can feel like they have to almost like hold a part of themselves back that's the most real and you know fi genuine and so that can cause a lot of stress to build up or like some sort of mental health problems too and so when we have a space where we can really talk about the things that really make us come alive with each other we, we almost help each other alleviate these mental health sim symptoms that we could have it's almost like we help each other become better physically, mentally, spiritually through being as honest and candid about our, our, our thoughts and feelings about things that other people just don't get, you know, INFJs and INFPs, they're known for having one sided relationships. So it's almost like these types will give to other people like the INFP has amazing listening skills and they'll listen to people but they never really get that listening back and you know infjs they they know the path that people should take um and people don't normally know how to listen until the consequences come in and then what's the point of telling someone about what they should be doing if the consequences have already hit and there's no point so both the infj and the infp feel chronically not listened to because in their day-to-day -day life so when they meet each other they they kind of understand each other and they're able to understand each other on a deeper level that is 
almost so therapeutic and cathartic <laughs> that it it feels like feeling alive after a long time of feeling like not alive. <laughs> yeah, carth- cathartic's a great word. Um, but yeah, but that that's what it is. It's like because me, I, I just I really don't. That like you said, like we're. We listen, but we're not really always listened to because that's how it does feel like a lot of times the free thi- uh, psychologist kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot that we give, but then all of a sudden, you know, that person just takes off. You know, it's like, well, what, what, what in the world just happened? So it's fine because, I, like you said, I like I like the journey part of just going down that and seeing if I actually help the person. So it's not like I, I lose out completely when they just walk away and <laughs> never help me or whatever. But I'm not necessarily looking for help. Because like for me, I don't really, I don't reach out to people to necessarily help me because I feel that I'm pretty good at it on my own. Like I know how to, when I have Sean alone time, um, I kind of like, I kind of know how to get through my mental hurdles. Like I, I just, I can go, I, I get really low. I can kind of, I, I got enough in me to pull myself out of those trenches um, and don't feel I need like a ton of external help. But I mean, there will be moments where I will vent. Like, you know, it might be like a build up in six months. I find someone that has a listening ear. Maybe it is a lot of times an INFJ. <laughs> um, so like when I see that someone is welcoming to like an understanding, I kind of like feel it out and you can kind of pick it up. And like, it's like, wait a minute, this person might listen to me. And then I kind of dump on that person. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's just, it's not a, probably the best, healthiest way to go about things. But um, for me, that's just kind of how it is. And it's like, so I think that, yeah, like you're probably, you got a point because, there is a lot, there is so much that I can do mentally for my own self, because again, just researching this, understand your own self internally, it kind of does help you somewhat, you know, have a chance for getting out of the ruts that uh, some people that aren't good internally have to, you know, outsource the psychologist or whatever, you know, go down there. But for us, like, but I also have the blinding spots of things that you can help with. And it's just like the little pieces that I'm like, man, I just keep like repeating this. And I'm just like, I need help. So then you can come into play where it just, you know, I don't know, guides me in that direction that I'm like, oh, well, how, how did you know to put me here, Joyce? Well, thank you. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know. I, but yeah, I think that's what it is. I, I just think, because we do, like, you know, with you guys, the, the the focus and like kind of like the all the stuff that we're not the best at, not the saying we can't do it. Um, I can do plenty of, you know, things that focus. I can, I can focus and I can do all that stuff, but um, but yeah, I don't always like to. So even though it's like, there's a time where I'm like, you should really focus that I'm like, eh, I'll do that later. <laughs> and then, but you can come in there and remind me kind of thing. Like, Hey, uh, <laughs> all you gotta do is come back over here, little buddy. So <laughs> yeah, it really feels like that. I've been told by INFPs, I'm kind of like this to them. They have a a Rubik's cube that like they're trying to like organize and like resolve. And so you kind of hand that Rubik's cube off to an INFJ and they're like, oh yeah, this is how you solve that. And they'll help you organize your life and then give it back to you. And you're like, wow, you solved the Rubik's cube. (laughs) So it's like that. The meeting of two NFs is like the meeting of two psychologists or two therapists. And then they just give each other therapy or they give each other psychological help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, so, I mean, but that's, that's how it would be. Like you would give me back my Rubik's cube. Um, and then I would, <laughs> I would uh, definitely appreciate the new starting direction, but then I would completely unravel the Rubik's cube. <laughs> like it would quickly happen again, but like, at least you would kind of bring me back to a organized way. And then I will just do my thing and spread away again. Um, but I, but that's the whole thing. It's like, I kind of, I can kind of help go out and gather information and do all kinds of weird searching where like, you know, you, it's just that yin and yang thing. It's just the balance of, you know, that's why I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm super intrigued. And I think like for me, I, we, when I was over on uh, your last type talk with all the, the eight INFPs, um, it was interesting to me because um, uh, Paul uh, M he, he has the ESTJ wife and that was cool. Cause me, cause I've had EST. So it's like, I think INFPs are really like, for me, I'm really drawn to things that are different than me. Um, just in general. Cause it's like, that stuff intrigues me. So like, yeah, I have an INFP based channel where I'm trying to like find where all the INFPs are hiding <laughs> so we can all relate. Um, but at the same time, so I love that aspect, but when it comes to people, I really am super intrigued by opposite types where, and INFJ is a very opposite thing, you know, uh, it's very opposite with our functions of this and that, but like there's that relatable vibe to it. So you're not, 
it's just more of that comforting place where it's just like, man, there's something about Joyce. It's just like, it's very intriguing to me because you're just very much different, but also we have that similarity of just understanding, I guess I should say, the understanding similarity between us, our types, I guess. Um, yeah. Extroverted I, just, I just don't feel judged by an IFJ. It's like, it's just, it's just weird. <laughs> it's just a weird vibe that you guys have. And your guys' job is to kind of screen us to like make sure we're comfortable. <laughs> so you're constantly like lasering me. Um, and that one, I still feel guilty for that one. The first uh, talk we had, it's like you felt guilty because you thought I was bored. Um, but that's the problem with me. Um, it, it has nothing to do with that. I just have a very bad resting bad face. <laughs> uh, and it's just, but that's what it is. I'm, I'm very detached, um, especially when I go into talking. I, I just, I'm not aware of my outside. I'm just really not. Um, and so like, I feel bad because like, commonly I get that going through life. It's like, hey, cheer up, buddy. Or you need to smile. What, what's so wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm totally fine and I'm having actually a good day. But like, if I'm not really, I don't know, going around trying to put on a fake smile, it's like an FE user is going to pick up on that. A lot of times for me, it's like, man, why are you all, are you okay? Are you like, so, um, yeah, again, I don't know where that was going. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, yeah. So anytime I'm on your channel, I promise Joyce, if it looks like I'm not in engaged or, like excited. I'm I'm super excited about this stuff. Um, so anytime I'm collaborating with anybody, um, I'm always excited to be there. Uh, it's never a chore. None, none of this YouTube stuff has ever felt like a chore to me. It, Cause it's kind of like, like a lot of like what I do with the editing and all that, it's a lot of work. Um, it takes a lot of time, but it's like, it's, it's the free time that instead of going fishing or whatever, or, you know, whatever other people do, I just like to make videos. So for me, it's always just anything YouTube related. Um, it can get overwhelming at times with all the social interaction you need to do to like kind of manage the channel. Um, but like, it's just something that I keep being drawn to. Cause it's, again, it's just that whole feeling of just like, I don't necessarily want to socially interact with a bunch of people this week, but like you get drawn back to like, well, I want to keep the thing going. Like, cause you're just, you're, you're helping people congregate and find a place to come. And like, you know, when you make a video, people are like, Oh, I'm excited. I come over there and they get to see it. So like, to me, it's just an excitement factor of actually just helping people, you know, get together. Like, I don't know. I just. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm always happy to have you on my channel. It, it brings a smile on my face. Yeah. You, except you when I'm like, there. except when it's like 10 o'clock and I look tired. <laughs> I'm old, Joyce. I, I get tired and grumpy looking. <laughs> uh, and I'm a night owl, so I, I constantly like make these panels very late at night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, but the, the first that one I dropped, it was like 10 p.m. I had to disregard on that one. But no, the last one, that's all right. But that's usually any time past like, so it, yeah, it's just I can I still I still caffeine up and I try to like wake up as best as I can. But uh, yeah, past eight for me, it's just like, I don't know, tit or miss. So no, I, I mean, if you want to, if you need me ever to help you out or if you need to fill some space or whatever, like if you want to bring me over, by all means, I just can't always promise like a 10 p.m. one's going to work for me. Because <laughs> I used to be a night owl like when I was young, but now I'm, I'm definitely not a morning person by any means. Um, but I do have like a 10 p.m. bedtime kind of old man thing going on. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. That's just part of age. <laughs> No worries. It happens. And you said, um, you said how you like people who are different than you. Yeah. That tends to be a trait of people who have, um, have extroverted intuition. They tend to like variants. They tend to like to meet new patterns. So N E is all about new patterns. So when you meet someone who's vastly different than you, it gives you more chance to explore them. And my ENFP best friend in high school, what she would tell me is that what she loved most about me and her was that we were different. <laughs> she didn't want us to be the same and so it reminded me of what you said yeah what well, where did uh, so where did you meet like uh like Heidi and all them like is there like some kind of like you know, how, do you reach out to them how does that work because it's like I don't know yeah so I met Heidi at a real life meetup she lives really close to my house okay <laughs> <laughs> we're basically uh long like we're basically neighbors at this point I'm kidding that's an exaggeration but the, like the type community is a small world and so uh, that was a great a great meeting i i so, so there's this saying that um enfps don't like pants so one of my first sentences they don't like pants was, yeah yeah it's a running joke <laughs> so <laughs> i i asked heidi 
what is your opinion on pets? And she's like, I hate them. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's an ENFP thing. And then Heidi was like, I feel so seen. And that was how <laughs> our friendship started. <laughs> But that, like little things like that, you know what I mean? It's like, that's what's funny. Cause like the, the laundry thing, when I threw the laundry thing, living out of the dryer, like this is just stuff I do all the time. Like, I don't think nothing of it. I'm just like going about my day. I'm like living out of the dishwasher. I'm doing all this stuff to where I just, you know, the mundane chores and all this stuff that I just like, I just despise. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a slob. Um, I just have in- more interesting things I want to do uh, than, you know, do this A to B, you get C. Like, I don't, I don't like any of that. And like I've done laundry billions of times. I know what the outcome is. It's not exciting to me. Uh, so, so what it does is sit in the dryer. So like for me, it's always been natural. And so for me, I'm like, man, why can't you just do the laundry fully? Like, why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? And then like all of a sudden you stumble upon like some kind of weird comment that someone brings something up and you're like, wait a minute. Like, is that, is that like a thing? Is that, is, is that not just me? Are you serious? So a lot of that stuff, um, that like I've always kind of kept quiet, uh, like it, going through life, like on YouTube, it, it's like, I, I have moments where I'm just like, Hey, what if I say this? Let's see what happens. <laughs> so like, Hey, does anyone else do this? So that's where it came out of nowhere because just like recently in the comment section, there was a couple, it was weirdly how it transpired, but, um, it came out of the comment section where it was like laundry, not really like living out of the dryer. And I'm like, I do that too. So that's why I brought it up just cause I wanted to kind of see <laughs> if, it's kind of like a no pants ENFP thing. Uh, if it's an INFP thing, <laughs> so it doesn't mean it's always going to hit everybody, but like, I just think it's cool when you can get like a good group of the bunch to like agree and be like, wow, I do that too. It's just really, again, feeling makes you feel seen and like you're just like, <laughs> it, it feels good. I don't know. This stuff's fun. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It, hashtag perceiver life that's like living out of the dryer like it, it's definitely you'll you'll see a trend between perceivers and doing things like that <laughs> but that's what i mean we can utilize people like when i know i'm horrible at that if i can link up with someone like you and be like hey joyce you want it, it's not like you know hey do my chores for me but it's just like you know it's just like there's things that you can help balance me out in life in general not not just lawn not chores not, i don't want you need to come over and be my maid <laughs> i just uh it, it's just like you know what i mean it's that compliment and um so I, but i get i get very stubborn with um because i like to do everything kind of for myself i i just I, I do get that way to where i don't really generally let a lot of people help me um i just like to kind of do it on my own and struggle through life and figure it out uh i just always been that way um but like but there is a part where i will concede and just like Hey, uh, hey, buddy, I'm not. Can you kind of help me? Like, so. But if you if you know where to look for that kind of complimenting like difference, then it's nice to have that access um, that you can trigger, I guess. Yeah, it's almost like we can enhance each other by taking care of each other's blind spots or the areas that we're not as strong in. So it's like outsourcing our weaknesses instead of trying to handle our weaknesses all on our own like a more effective way of tackling that is to have other people who are good at it and like doing it to, to help you with it. Yeah. Yeah. So where, where do you, um, when you do the videos, like, how do you come up with your topics? Do you just, do you have like, I mean, do you, you probably have lists upon lists, right. Of like what you want to do next. Yeah. So I normally do these videos. Like I have a lot lined up beforehand. So I'm two weeks to three weeks ahead in schedule and for these videos, I kind of just see what people want and I go with what people want and I tend to just schedule it far in advance. <laughs> but you're like, you're like busy. I mean, like just cause you edit your videos, like all the type talk ones, you just go through the whole thing. Right. So yeah. Yeah, it's not crazy, crazy, crazy high tech editing, but like just chopping a two, three hour video up that takes a long time. Like it's just, cause it's not, it does, you gotta like go through and chop it up. And I don't know, I re watch a lot of my chop ups like this one. I'll go back and edit it, but I'm going to rewatch it a bunch of times to make sure there's no, like, I just, I get perfectionism. Oh, perfectionism. So uh, perfectionism, um, you brought up one time oh, on the last type talk. It was interesting to me cause I never like linked them two together. So I learned something. I always learn something anywhere I go, but uh, with with someone you brought it up or someone brought it up like yeah. when you're uh when you're bullied like I was heavily bullied all through high school like I was like every day heavily bullied 
Um, so like when you're heavily bullied, you can get a, a little bit more of a perfectionism uh, kind of issue. Because uh, that's my thing. It's like everything I do is high level perfectionism. I, I, I'm at a point where I can still produce things. I don't get, you know, I don't get too caught up with, you know, nowadays. I mean, back then, yeah, unfinished projects everywhere and just too overwhelming. I can't make my vibrant mind, you know, produce a quality kind of representation on the outside. But nowadays I have enough to where I can kind of get things done. But I, I just, I struggle with perfectionism to a high level. And I think that's a big thing. Just, I think that's can be a thing generally for an INFP with perfectionism struggles. But um, for me, it's always been, I'm, I'm like a very competitive person, but it's not competitive. It's competitive with myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not like a competitive nature to where I'm just trying to, I guess, prove to myself that I can do it. And I think a lot of that's just residual stemming from like, you know, like six, seven years of everyday bullying. And now it's kind of like I'm trying to prove something. And a lot of it's just high perfectionism, high standards for myself. And it's just a lot of it comes from that. So I don't know. Yeah, a big part of perfectionism is preventing pain. So if someone is a perfectionist, you know that they're trying to prevent some sort of pain. So some sort of negative reception. Or it's also a TI or FI thing where they kind of have such high standards for themselves that they need to meet their own standards. And it doesn't matter what anyone says. Like they're like, wow, that's such an amazing video you made. The FI and TI need to think that they, they, they consider it a good video in their own standards, especially FI. They'll go like, I I need this to be good in the way that I view it, and, and it's so it's it's hard to kind of cheer up an FI user when they think that the the thing they made was bad and you think it's good, because <laughs> FI is going to weigh its own opinion on its own creation more than outside feedback. And that that's what's hard even for me to this day. You know, I get like a, you know get like a dislike button hit. It's like there's a lot of stuff that like a lot of this stuff and a lot of reason why I understand why NFPs don't necessarily stay on YouTube for long periods of time is because it is very, it's not easy. Like this stuff, I mentally stay up at night kind of processing a dislike button hit or something like that. You know what I mean? It, it, that's just part of social media. It, it, not everyone's going to like what you want to like. A lot of the dislikes or negative comments can is just coming from a place within that person. It has nothing to do with necessarily what you made. Um, but there's a lot of things that don't line. So like, that's the problem with me. I just really have to mentally stay strong with, okay, look, dude, your FI aligned that week with that topic and you were excited about it and you were passionate about it and you worked on this edit for like three days in a row. <laughs> you didn't eat or sleep. You were so excited about it. And then when you post it, like, you know, you hear crickets or you get some dislike. I don't really like that because their FI is not aligning with my FI. It's like all this stuff. Like I have to really, as an INFP individual, like I have to like really just like, okay, just calm down, like calm down. <laughs> so like, that's the thing like with, becoming a creator and again targeting an infp audience it's not like this huge cheerleader type squad necessarily like we like to lurk we like to stay in the shit we don't like to engage all the time uh because again we're avoiding that criticism or someone to like we put a comment someone has the potential to grab that comment and like you know kind of shake it up a little bit and be like i don't really agree with you um so i think our just aversion to criticism and all that stuff um for me I try to lightly encourage INFPs on my channel to like, just kind of like, just put their water, just keep trying. Um, because again, I think if it, it, but it's hard because a lot of times we keep all our stuff in all that vibrant stuff that we can be creative and artistic and all that. It's unfortunate because a lot of INFPs keep that in because of a fear of all that and just the perfectionism. And just, it's, it's so for, it's just, I try to lightly encourage, but you don't want to tell them do this everybody. <laughs> uh, but it's just, I don't know. Oh, I keep ending with no point. Um, that that was a ma magnificent point, Sean. A lot of INFP struggle with perfectionism, and it causes them to not put out all the brilliant things that they create, like the right amazing poems or whatever. Create amazing videos or create amazing like they they have the potential to create so many amazing things in life that th the quality that they make is so much higher than any other thing that I've seen like out there because the perfectionism is a high standard. So even when I see their rough work, I'm like, this is this is like a prodigy work because FI, because it holds itself to such a high standard, it creates beautiful things. And I'm like, please put this out. And it's so hard to convince an INFP yeah. to put it out. <laughs>
No, it, it's a lot. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I said, my videos, if I just get, it's just, it's dumb because a lot of times when you are pursuing something outside of the norm and this and that, like success, it's said that, you know, once you start getting a lot of hate, <laughs> like that's when you've, you've kind of made it. <laughs> so it's unfortunate to me. I know that's how life works is just like, when you do pursue something on your own path and what INFPs really should be going down, that's really, in my opinion, the faster we can really get off the, you know, just do our thing. Um, and for the longest time, you know, I, I always was interested in my own stuff, but I still always kind of fit in and blur with society because I didn't want to get judged and critiqued. And I, I wanted to be a people pleaser and I didn't want, you know, I didn't want people not to like me. Um, so for the longest time I did that, but like, you know, mid thirties, it kind of like became like a switch where I was like, it just turned into this really, I don't know, like very direct, like more of like, now I want to go like my own path more and more, um, and explore that side of it and just, but it comes with more adversity. It comes with more criticism. It comes with all the stuff that we try to like avoid all our life. Um, but I think if an INFP doesn't like get on their own path, um, like sooner than later, like you're just never going to find happiness because uh, I just, but, but that's the problem with it. It's just, we're, we're kind of set up to where we're, it's very difficult for an INFP to get on their own path because you start, when you do that, then everyone starts saying stuff. And then, you know, like family members, friends, things like that. It's like, why are you doing that for? Why are you doing that? And then an INFP can like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, never mind. I, I won't do that anymore. And then the world gets kind of suppressed with not having that vibrant, like prodigy kind of crazy stuff and like that's just that's one of the big unfortunate things i see um just with creative types that are really f fearful of judgment and criticism and all that so yeah it's almost like infps are so harder themselves that the weight of another person's criticism is like the death blow it's almost like it, it could it hurts so much more um so yeah it's a fear of negative criticism from outside people on their work. And you're totally right about that, Sean, that it prevents INFPs from sharing the gifts and all of these amazing things that they have to offer to the world, which, you know, I'm always blessed whenever an INFP is courageous enough to share that with me. And, and, and so you're totally right, Sean, about how when you have haters, you know that you've made it. That's true. With every person who is a public persona out there, the moment like people become more jealous or more insecure, it, it's the moment when you've you've become your channels become big enough for for people to want to hate on. <laughs> I don't know when the trolls start surfacing, you know that your channel's growing so big that you're going to get some bad eggs. It's kind of like this. Here's the statistics for psychopaths: two percent of the population are psychopaths. So the bigger your channel grows, the more chance that you'll come across psychopaths. And so the same applies for haters. You're, the, the more your channel grows, the more naturally, the more haters you'll have. So it's a part of the business. I know it's part of being uh, someone in the public space. And, and that's what I mean for me, though, like uh, going through b bowling, like the heavy extent I did, like so early on, it had to be really to go through and process why people are doing this to me. You know, I'm just someone who's just trying to hide and like not be seen in this and that. But like I was, like I said, targeted every day. And it's just, it was a very rough time for me, but it forced me early on to really understand that concept of where it's coming from. Cause it's not, it wasn't anything I was doing. You know what I mean? I was just going to class to class and I'm just getting like completely targeted. Uh, you know, walking in between each class. Like, it's just like, what I didn't, I don't even know you. Like, why are you, why are you making fun of me? Why are you putting me on the spot? Like all this stuff. Um, so for me, I, it really made me understand where bullies are coming from, where haters, all that stuff. Um, so I have enough knowledge to, it doesn't mean it doesn't affect me for like a little small part of the day. You know, if I get a dislike or something, it, it might kind of like step me back a little bit, but then I have enough in me to process, you know, that it's not, something I did intentionally, you know, if, I, if I'm intentionally making something to harm somebody or say bad things to somebody, but that's not what I'm doing. It's just, it's part of, you know, again, like you said, whatever it is um, within them that they have, it's just, but that's the, that's the unfortunate thing. I see a lot of, even if you've never been bullied, whatever um, it's just INFPs are going to let the bullies, the 2% win kind of thing. And that's, that's my whole thing in life. It's like, I, I stand up, that's my kind of driving force in life is, Staying up against bullies, that's kind of my little INFP mission. I don't stand for, that's like my highest pet peeve on my list of life. Uh, I like, I don't like bullying at all. Um, 
but like it's it's just it, it's just again if you give up based on somebody's opinion of you know if someone steps on your fi and is not really delicate with it then you, you they win and like i'm tired i'm tired of them winning because <laughs> it's like I don't know. I just, so it's hard to get a, an INFP to like see that. And like, I'm not also, I'm not good with compliments. So like, I just, I've never been good at compliments when someone says something like, Oh, great work or great video. I don't know what to say. Like, I'm like, uh, I, I, you know, it's easy to just say, Oh, thank you for that. But like, for me, I, I can't really, I'm not good with compliments. And so like, I don't know. I, I appreciate them. I, I don't need to be thanked all the time and this and that. I, I think I, I do need, I, I want to kind of feel appreciated for the work that I put into, but I'm not one of those people that need to hear like, Oh, you're great. Or this and that. I don't want that at all. I don't want awards. I don't want to be in the spotlight. I don't want any of that. Um, but like there is a certain level of like, just someone like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I, I have issues, Joyce. <laughs> it, it's okay. We, we all do. And, and so what you said, it, so there's this concept I have with INFPs. There, there's two kryptonites of the INFP. One is perfectionism, which we talked about. And the second kryptonite of INFPs is the dabbling. So it, it's, related, it's related to the perfectionism. So what happens is because of the heavy perfectionism, sometimes they don't really commit themselves to something. And so what can happen is that they'll switch between topics, but never really go into any of them. So the one of the possible kryptonites for INFP is to be a, like you, you can be a healthy dabbler, which is what you're doing, Sean, like you're dabbling, you're learning so much and that's healthy dabbling. But there's also unhealthy dabbling where you kind of don't want to commit to anything and you end up becoming 50, 60, 70 without a clear life path. And it's possible, this applies for all NPs. So anyone with an NP in their code, because of their extroverted intuition, if they're not careful, they can see all the bad and good points of every path and not choose any for their, the entirety of their life. And so that's a possible kryptonite. So just to, my, my word of advice uh, for INFPs is that for the perfectionism is that probably you're way harder on yourself than than need be and I probably if I saw your work I'd be in love with it so give the people the gift of you the give the world the gift of you like what you create could magnificently transform someone's life even if it's one person's life you could change the trajectory of how they lived their life because they were so moved by what you created and so that brings me to an INFP strength it's to create something that's very touching and very moving and so because Sean, your content is so raw and real, it is it is more touching and it's more moving to the people who listen to it. Like INFPs are able to stir the emotions from people through through their the things that they create because it's so genuine. And so if you just put yourself out there, even if it's not perfect, it might be perfect to someone. So basically Perfection is not about the technicalities of what you create. It's not about the, the little SI things, although that does make it a little better. What makes something perfect is that it has your essence in it and whatever you create inevitably has your essence in it. So it's already perfect. And so I would recommend y'all to put out the beautiful things you create because you will, you will touch lives with it and all you have to do is just put it out there but that's my experience is like the best medicine is just kind of ignoring it like i, I just yeah it doesn't matter what you say to those people that come at you um good bad mm -hmm. whatever it is it doesn't matter they just want attention uh they want you to do something uh so i i think a lot of people get caught in the trap of you know the, the bullies and this and that it's like when you really entertain them and you just you keep saying something good. They just want your attention kind of thing. And just to yeah. get you to stop or like, you know, it gets again, the more they have your attention, the less you're doing what they don't want you to do. So it's just, you can get caught in that tornado of, I don't know, unproductivity, I guess. But, yeah. um, but no, I, that's what I mean. I agree with you. And that's why I, I do try to lightly encourage INFPs. Um, but that's why there's a lot, like a lot of the younger INFPs, um, you know, I'll be 40 here in a little bit, but like a lot of the younger INFPs, they, they commonly ask like, what should I do now? What should I do? But for me, I always, I don't really try to give hard advice um, because for me, I always saw it as, um, I, you know, 
I always had to experience it for myself. Like growing up, it's like, you know, I can have an older person that probably had the right answer, but little 20 year old Sean, he's like, whatever old guy, <laughs> I'm going to go do that. I need to like test it for myself. Um, so like, I think with a lot of INFPs, we, you know, with the NE and all that kind of everything in life has to offer. There's so many things when you're young, it's overwhelming because you want to do this, do this, do this, this. And there's so many creative aspects, so many like career choices, so many degrees you can go pursue. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just a product of us dabbling. Again, it's more on an unhealthier level of dabbling because we're trying to learn, like learn how to walk in the INFP footsteps. Um, but it's like learning, like dabbling with all that stuff. But then for me, it like does come to a point when all that stuff, it kind of all finally starts sinking in. You got a lot of SI built up. You got a lot of stuff that's kind of there for the taking that when you become an older one. Um, and again, I, I've heard this. It's weird to me because I've heard, I've had a trend on my in the comment section where at least, I don't know, five or six older INFPs that I've had conversations with, they all had that kind of switch that I had, like mid-30s to 40. There was this weird switch of clarity to where it's like, again, it's based on the person, whatever they you know experience in life. But there was like some weird switch around that level to where I think it's just a combination of playing with everything. It turns into more of a laser focus, like, okay, I pretty much... All the crazy stuff out there, I kind of know what I don't really like and what I do like. It, like it, it's more focused, I think. Like the older you get, um, but that's where I'm kind of at in life. Like I, I don't want to. I don't want to regret something when I'm 70. Like you said, like I, I don't want to get to 70 and look back and say I didn't try that. So like you know, it's like because um, there's so many things out there that I'm fearful of, and I'm I'm kind of addicted to pushing myself. Uh, it, it's scary. It's hard. Like people look at people that pursue things, but like for me, I have the same fears that another like INFP is going to have with criticism, all that stuff. It doesn't mean it went away. It's all there, but like, I just don't want to have that regret because this one person said this about my content or this and that. And I just gave up. And like, I don't want to be 70 and say like, man, I, w I wish I, what would have happened if I would have kept going. So that's where I'm kind of at in my life. This, I'm just trying to like do stuff, but I don't know. And, and another hard part about being an FI dom is that it's hard to do things where your FI is not into it. So it's like, you have to find that thing that really sparks your FI or you won't want to do it. But the thing is, when you guys do put your heart into it, you have an FI stylistic touch. Like, you know, Sean, with the names here, you added a blue slant and with the background, it's all stylistic. And FI is the function that is most most it has the greatest ability to add style and add personality and add flair to things and it, if you infps let yourself shine you will add personality and depth and wonder to the world that the world has never seen before in that capacity so yeah we can end on that joyce that was a great ending like we can like <laughs> we can go out on that if you want i i'm letting you steer the boat so <laughs> No, the boat, the boat is in the, I don't know. but <laughs> Yeah, we can do part, like one part, two part, three part series maybe that are shorter. <laughs> well, I don't hold that. me to any kind of plan with that. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, like, like, it's funny because like when I was on Harry's channel, that cognitive personality theory guy on the INFJ, he was like trying to do that too with me. He's like trying to get us to do like some regimen, like part one, two, three, and I failed him bad. I just, I, I can't, I can't, because again, I'm not like aligned necessarily. It's like, I do this, I'm excited. Like right now with you, it's like, I'm excited. I want to talk about it. But then like next week, it's not like I'm not excited about talking to you. It's just like, I found a new shiny penny. And I'm just like, so for me, I, I, it's not saying I can't do a part two structured thing, but like, if I'm not aligned, like you said, if I, if I, if I was not aligned with it, it's not going to be, I'm not going to feel like it was the best um, kind of thing. From me, I, I just don't like to be forced to do something. And I think a lot of INFPs in the work world and things like that are forced to kind of just, again, do work because it's making the company money and do this. But like, there's a lot of stuff that people aren't harnessing INFP abilities um, because we're just forced to, you know, dole it all and just like do this. And that's, and don't think about anything else or how to improve it or how to make it stylistic or whatever. Just do this because I said, and that's just, I don't know. Yeah, and what happens when INFPs have to live outside their FI wants is that they start to get dysthymic and they start to get depressed because you can't do that to yourself for a long period of time without your body suffering the consequences. 
And, and that's what I mean. My whole 20 year work, work, don't work life again. It's, it's been in a completely non preferred INFP world. Um, but it's very heavily fast paced, stressed. Um, I can be successful at it, whatever, but like that's where YouTube came into play. Um, I find I'm most creative when I'm like extremely like put up against the wall and I'm like burnt out, like taking on YouTube at the time I did, my life was so overwhelmingly chaotic. I mean, it's just like for me to take on something like that and not, you know, social media in general, cause I don't do social media, but everything, a new video passion that I found. Oh, you like video editing. Now you got to go learn that craft of how to even start. Um, but everything with it all, it's like, it's weird because as much as taking on that massive of a start with YouTube, um, it's like from square one, uh, it was driven based on, I had no room for really anything else in my life, but like I had to do something where I was like creatively doing something or else, I, like you said, I, I know I gave up so much of my health and every, I sacrificed so much of like my my preferred INFP inside um, for the value of a dollar and like for the, you know, working for the whatever, um, just doing the rigid everyday work kind of stuff. Um, so it doesn't mean I can't inject little INFP creative stuff in my everyday work lifestyle, but it's few and far between when I get to do that. Cause most of the time I got to function as more of like an ESTJ type person, you know, really getting things done. You know, I don't have time to really think about my feelings. No one cares. They want to make money and get the machines fixed or whatever. Um, but like, so I have to kind of navigate that way. And when I do that, I can do it. Um, but I get very stressed. Um, I, my days are very, very stressed. <laughs> and so, like that's where YouTube literally came into play. It's like it was at a very, very low point in my life um, where I'm just like, I don't know, I got to do something. <laughs> so YouTube came out of nowhere. And I don't know, the fact that I'm still doing it two years later, I've never done a creative kind of passion this long in my whole entire life, like ever. So like that's what that's the whole thing. It's weirdly because I've avoided social media my whole entire life. I've always lurked. I never made one single comment on YouTube for like the 10 years prior to watching con like or whatever it was. I never, I never did any of that. So for me to be on YouTube right now and for it to weirdly align to where I'm like drawn to it because of all the creative aspect of it, you can help people. Um, you can make people feel not alone. You can like, and that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of my, what I do is like the video editing is just, that's my creative outlet. So, but then I get other stuff on the side of it. So um, with just again, people, congregation things like that and just getting to i don't know meet people like you um so it's just interesting i mean i keep getting drawn back but it's just i like i don't know i like youtube yeah i i feel the same way about youtube it allows me to meet wonderful creators like you sean and it really just brings a certain type of joy to my life and that brings us to like how to make for a happy infp so infps if you're not feeling happy in your life and you're feeling stressed consider that it might be because you're living outside of your element and a way to maybe resolve that is to look at the things that really do make you happy that even if you're bad at they still make you happy that's how you know you like something even if it's not perfect you still enjoy doing it that's how you know it's your calling so go towards that go towards that make it either something you integrate into your life in some way is to retain to retain your your fi joy in life because if you're not joyful, then why else should is is life worth living? So go pursue that. Give it your full heart because the world needs more INFPs who put their full heart into what they love. And also that part where Sean was like, don't hold me to that plan <laughs> is so perceiver. So yeah, that's another <laughs> JP uh... difference. So judges will be like, hey, this is something that we should do in a structured way. And then the perceiver will be like, if I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I'll call, I'll accommodate. I, I, I'm not going to just like, oh, whatever. I'm going to do whatever I want when I want. So, I mean, I'll definitely show up for the J people and things like that. So I'll do it. But like, yeah, it's preferably it's just like, but that's my whole thing. It's not saying I can't, you know, present well or do whatever that person needs to do in a structured thing. Cause I can do stuff. If people defend, depend on me to get something done. I'll get it done. Um, but like, it's just, I know that my full on deep FI self is not into it then I just, that's, that's where that perfectionism comes in. Cause even though that, you know, the person might be, Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. This is a great, whatever. Um, for me, it's kind of like, it's not that great because it could be so much better. <laughs> so, uh, if it was just aligned whenever my, uh, flowing calendar of changing <laughs> moods <laughs> comes in line, which, which I never know when that is, but, uh, 
So it's, uh, but that's what's funny because like when I, like you, you said, you do kind of have things kind of listed out. When I started YouTube, that's what I did. I made a list and I had like a list. I still, I still got the same list on my phone. It's like a list that has like 10 video ideas. After the third video, every single one got, I never looked at that list again and everything is week to week. Everything is based week to week and I don't have a plan. I don't, I don't have like a bunch of videos I make on one day and then have them in the bucket. I make it all like as I go. <laughs> it's, it's so, but it's so, it's, it's not the best because it's like, I just, you know, it's just, I don't know. Cause it gets overwhelming. Cause it's like, Oh, what am I even going to talk about next week? And then somehow magically something comes into my head and then I'm passionately into this video project, but it's literally week to week based. It has no future outlook of like, Oh, I know what I'm doing next week. I know what I'm doing in two weeks. It's ever since like the third video, like I said, it's all, it's all week to week. It's, it's kind of a mess, but it, it's like, it's, it works. Um, but that's what I'm saying. When you actually notice that's where it is coming from, that's, that's nice to hear because it's like, I feel like it's just a crazy chaotic mess of just whatever I'm ranting about, whatever. But like, it's nice that it kind of shows through because that's really what it is. It's like, it's my, that's what aligns with my FI. I'm passionate about it in the moment. And I'm glad that, you know, like I, Susan, you, you've noticed that kind of, there's something weird about it. Like, and that's, that's all it is. I'm not doing anything special. I'm not a special human being. I'm just like, just doing my passionate rant in the moment. Um, I'm, I'm hitting the record button. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Whatever. And it's magnificent every time. It's just, you, you, you hit gold each time. And so that's a difference between INFP and INFJ. INFPs do things in a moment of inspiration, but when INFPs do things, it, it's really, really high quality because they do it when they're feeling it and you can feel it in their videos and in their work with INFJs, they do it more consistently, but they'll have less of a, a, a spark to their to their work <laughs> it's more of a consistently dulling out things and another difference between infp and infj is uh how we show up for each other so i noticed that when infps when they cancel plans with me it's because they believe that they can't give me their 100 percent. so they're like i, I want to be truly there for you when i'm there for you joyce so when they're like oh i'm actually not feeling that well today, may we reschedule? The, the INFP wants to give you their all. And I noticed that because I had a chat with my INFP friend and, and why he, when his FI is, is in a weird funk, he'll want to go like, can we talk another day? Um, and I never knew where that came from. And so I, I asked him and that's what he said. He said, because my standard is being truly there for you. And if I can't be there for you, then I'd want to do it another day. And for me, <laughs> as a judger, my my standard is the the consistency. It's it's having that clear plan. And, and so we realized that we had different standards that we were holding each other against. And it was really beautiful to share that with each other because we could then honor each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that, but that's what, that's a re big reason why I don't really have a big friend circle and all this, because I can't, I can't spread myself out amongst a lot of people because the amount that I want to be there for somebody. Um, and a lot of people that, 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 that amount of what energy is reserved for those people, like, you know, my kid and things like that in my really, really close circle a relationship, whatever it might be, it's reserved for that most majority. So I don't have, I don't have a place to really have 10 or 20 friends because I, I'm not a good surface level friend. Like I'm not like a, Oh, let's all go hang out. Let's pat each other on the back because I don't, I don't like to play in that world. Like I just, I, I really want to give someone is everything I got like <laughs> to really whatever, be there for them. And I need to focus on that. But like, that's where it can get very, you know, it gets like kind of hurtful at times when like, again, we are perceived as, you know, INFPs are selfish, uh, you know, because they just care about themselves and they don't have any friends and this, but like, it's like, it hurts us because um, for me anyway, because that's not the case. I, I, I care deeply about people in general. Um, I really do. I, 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 to a high level, but like, if you really just look at me from the outside of like, he's like some kind of hermit that <laughs> just sits in his house and hides and doesn't really want to interact with people. It's like, that's not the case. I'm just, I really need to reserve and build my, you know, energy up to give that person I interact with the best I can give of myself. But um, yeah. Yeah. It's that FI intensity when it does something, it wants to be intensely into it. There's a kind of like all or nothing component to FI where it needs to be like fully in emotionally, or it's like, 
it's it's not going to give a a half assed emotional response. It wants to give a full one. Whereas, so it's it's the difference between I F I depth versus F E breadth that INFJs have. So with me, I, I tend to be more okay with having a wider social circle because I'm not as intense with each and every bond I have. Whereas F I is more so intense. So INFJs can't have a bigger friend circle kind of? Thing? Well, they can have a smaller one because they're introverts. But yeah. They also have extroverted feeling, which makes them like kind of socialize generally with people. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's what I mean when I watch your videos. Like for me, I'm like looking at you, again, categorizing you as introverted or whatever. So like we all kind of have that kind of commonality, whatever, but with mm -hmm. people and, you know, how our energy gets built back up. But like, mm -hmm. but like when I see your videos and how you keep bring week to week, like you're bringing like, tons of people you're facilitating conversations like for me i wouldn't be i would burn out like, <laughs> like it's not saying i can't be social and this and that but like that's what you'll see like even on my videos i don't I, I can't like do sean talking week to week like i mix it up all the time to give myself a break because like so i'll do something just completely with me off the camera like just where it's completely creative or like some famous character whatever i decide to do um that kind of gives me a break for two weeks or three weeks to kind of take myself out of the social equation. Um, and then I come back like pretty energized and I'll make <laughs> two or three, but like with you, that's what I mean. I watch your videos. And I'm just like, how in the world is she doing that? Like <laughs> that's a lot of like people and like just a lot of stuff going on. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. But that's what I'm saying. Again, it's intriguing to me. I watch it and that's why I'm drawn to your channel because I'm just like, man, that, that would be hard for me. So I'm pretty, that's, that's really cool to me that she's doing that. I appreciate her for doing that. <laughs> Because uh, I'm not going to be ever doing that on my channel. <laughs> I might do it like once. You know, I might have like multiple INFPs. I always think about that plan. Just getting some like INFP viewers on there. But not definitely not going down the type talks road ever. That's not ever what I'm going to do. But um, but I, so that's what I mean. I like that I found you because your channel is something different. We have so many type channel kind of things. But it's like yours is nice because we know if we go to Joyce's channel you have that I can be the fly on the wall and just see so many different personalities to binge on and you can just watch them all interact and their little quirks between them and the relatable things. It's just, it's cool to me. And it shows the spectrum of what a type can show up as it gives a variety and it like, I like it because it, it's not siloed because every part of the world is kind of siloed now and they try to like be apart from each other. But my goal is to bring everyone together in a form of unity to make sure everyone feels happy together. And that, that, brings me joy. <laughs> I might be exhausted from the constant videos I, I put out. Like I'm afraid during this video, I, I feel, I feel kind of tired too, but I feel like it's exhaustion with a purpose. So I'm willing to bring myself to that point. I, like I'm willing to overwork myself if it's to help other people <laughs> and to, to help a greater vision and cause. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but no, since we're both tired and it's late, <laughs> Well, it's not even late. It's five thirty, <laughs> but we can we can end it now, Joyce. Um, For sure, I I always have so much fun talking to you, Sean. <laughs> You're very good with free freestyling conversation. Yeah. Well, but that's what that's what I feel comfortable with, though. It's like I just can't. I know a lot of people that come on my my channel. I try to give them that little pep talk in the beginning of how it's going to go down. How like you know we can edit stuff. I try to make it kind of comfortable, like. Like a lot of them want to like, do you have a topic? Do you have sentences? Do you have like this and that? And I'm just like, yeah, but it's not that fun doing that. <laughs> like, So I do typically try to write stuff down a little bit. Um, but a lot of times I never get to those things uh, because the conversation goes kind of where it goes. Um, so, but no, no, that's what I'm saying. Like talking with you, it's very refreshing. Like, obviously I'm still like energetic in this now. It's just like, I always get, I don't know. I get excited. These chats are fun to me. But, so I appreciate yeah. it. And like, I want everyone, all the viewers, to go stop over, I gotta say this because you gotta say this at the end. But like everyone needs to go check out Joyce's channel if you haven't already, because she like you guys already heard what we just talked about for the last hour and a half. But um, she does cool things and she brings people together and she's obviously trying to display that people are no one's better than nobody. We just all need to learn how to like function together and get along and heart, you know. Again, an INFP is not a bad person. <laughs> it's like we're all the same, pluses and minuses. So it's just kind of getting everyone to understand that. And Joyce is going to work hard on her. All the stuff she's got going on. Uh, I'm there for the ride. So I want to go kind of see all that when it kind of happens. So. Yeah. 
And I have videos with Sean, so you can check those out as well. And future videos with Sean will probably come out as well, too. So in, in the INFP panel we did together with the other male INFPs, they talked about how one of them talked about how they don't have friends. They just have extended family. And that's how I view you, Sean. Like, I see you as extended family. So I'm glad that we had this chance to talk. It, it always Yay. makes me happy. It brings me joy. You know, my, my name's Joyce. It brings me joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. The thing about INFPs, when they send me emails, they always send it with a pun. Well, some of them. So, like, with my friend Paul, like, he'll send me, hi, joy to the world, because there's a song called joy to the world. And I'll be yeah. like, wow. <laughs> so some some INFPs really like puns. And it's really hilarious, because you guys are, you know, quick witted, because you're you're you have a ability to freestyle conversation that like, extroverted intuition gives you a fast processing type of ability. So you're able to just go with the fly with things. And I really appreciate that about you. That's like a strong gift that you have. <laughs> and one, one thing for me, it's weird. And this might be a thing too, that I might explore. Cause I've, I've always been known as like, I always get called like the king of one liners. Um, so like always I'm, I'm a person that doesn't like to, if I'm in a group of people, I don't like to talk. Like, even if it's people like I'm like colleagues at work, I don't like to draw attention to myself. I don't like when like three people are looking at me, even though I'm comfortable at them. I don't like to do that. So more so how I prefer to do it is I'll, I'll say something really quick. I'm not really a good, great storyteller. I can be like on video editing or whatever. I can kind of get a story compiled uh, over time. But like when it comes to real life, I'm not. So like generally I'm always seen as like the king of one-liners. I get that all the time. And it's literally just something that comes off out of nowhere. It's like it flows with the conversation to where I don't like wait five minutes and then say it. It's like someone says something and immediately I come up with like the most perfect, like one line out of nowhere. And it's, it doesn't skip a beat. You know what I mean? Like how the people have the delayed response. Mine is super quick and it's very targeted, precise. It's very, it's very humoristic. Um, but even for me, I'm like, where in the world did that come from? <laughs> but it, it like hits right. And that's where I get it I've, all my life. I've like, man, you're like the king of one liners, dude. Um, and that's just something interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Extroverted intuition is fast on its feet and it can just deliver that really quick witted one liner that catches everyone off guard, but it's like in a in a very pleasant way. So that I, I love that quality about you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love a lot of qualities about you, Joyce. You're the best. You're my buddy. So you gotta stay yeah, my YouTube friendship. buddy. Do you wanna say goodbye? I don't know how to end them, Joyce. I'm not good For at this sure. stuff. Yeah, so go check out Sean's videos. You already you're on his channel, so you are, you already do, and you already know his material is fantastic. So yeah, if you guys want, you guys can also check out my channel, and I have coaching services if you want therapy. Uh, well, but if you want unofficial therapy, I'm your gal. I really enjoy doing it. If you want to talk to me about your life, yeah, go check me out. I'm sorry, I don't know what how to plug myself either. <laughs> I, it's so awkward. I'm just trying to get you to do my dirty work and end it because I don't like to end things. I feel guilty. <laughs> so. For sure. Yeah. So thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode. I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note. Uh, thanks, Joyce. Yeah. Thanks, Sean.